Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to the channel. In case you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button because we talk about the tech a lot and not just tech in like tech news, we definitely cover the tech news but we also cover the tech concept, the full stack projects, all about Git, all about machine learning, a whole wide range of aspect we cover here on this channel. So let's start with this video. So I was about to introduce you with a new platform and just I was about to introduce you with this new really crazy and crazy good platform, I thought, hey, these are the three terms I have never discussed about, about them. And these are the three terms which you should really know if you are building any kind of large scale application. What are these three terms? How did I found them out? Let me just go ahead and walk you through. So I was here on this website, I was about to introduce you the ingest, which is AI and backend workflows orchestrated at any scale. So I was talking about the scale. Just when I was preparing my notes to discuss about this platform in general, I scrolled down a little bit and I saw a really interesting aspect here. Oh, this is interesting. Batching, fan out and scheduling. And I realized I have never talked about them. So before I introduce you this platform, which I will do in the next video, I think one thing that I should do now is first of all introduce you to this tech as in general. So I thought, let's go ahead and talk about this. So in this video, we're going to talk about the three must known tech concept and especially if you're building any application which is probably at large scale or if you're building anything that is related to AI. Now this AI could be any kind of inferencing that you are doing. Probably you are processing videos, uh, probably you are processing images or maybe performing anything else, maybe interviews, whatever you're doing, this is a must to know uh, kind of a tech jargons if you have never worked around them. So in this video, we're going to just talk about three must to know tech concept. We'll take one by one and rest assured, after watching this video, you will never have to worry about any example or any uh, wild guesses about what these techs are. You will know exactly what they are and how they are, they need to be utilized. I will give you some of the real world examples so that you can compare them, how it happens in the real world. I'll give you the tech examples. I will give you the exact pros, why this specific method or specific technique is being utilized. Now, these topics are uh, pretty important and especially those people who are learning about system design and stuff, they actually study them just as a theoretical topic, but we actually use them in a regular day-to-day -day basis. So I thought, let's go ahead and start with them. So first of all, let's go ahead and start with my favorite one, which is batching. So why would anybody would like to see uh, what's going on with the batching and why even batching matters? So <laughs> let's start with this one, the easiest part of it. All right, so batching. How can you understand the batching as in general process? Whenever anybody asks you in the batching, just always remember this example. Let's just say there is a tea shop and this tea shop, the whole job is to make some or prepare some tea for the clients that are coming in, but they don't do it like that they first go ahead and take orders. And once the order limit reaches to, let's just say five orders of tea, then only they go out and start preparing the tea. This is the most important aspect of it. They don't, they don't perform the job immediately. They wait for a certain number of orders to pile up. And after that, only they start processing. This is exactly your batching process. And this is exactly how it works in the real world as example as well. Uh, one more example, uh, just where we use it actually. So let's just say we have this application. I'll just remove this. Let's just say we have this application and this application actually collects a lot of events. So as you can see, let's go up and have the event. So this is the one event. And then we also have one event, one event, one event. So a lot of events are happening. Let's just say these are 100 events per minute or per five minute that are happening. What do you think? It would be a good idea to write 100 write operation in the databases every second or something like that. It would be ridiculous. You will be overwhelming your databases. So we don't do that. We collect a lot of information about all these events happen. But once we reach the limit of the threshold of the 100, then only we go ahead and process them in the database. So process them in uh, DB. This is the most common example that you're going to see that a lot of events are getting collected, but once they reach the threshold, then we write the database just once, probably once every five minutes, five would be too long of a stretch. Uh, we actually do it every one minute, but again, every second you are collecting and overwhelming your database right per event would not be a great idea. So what happens when you do these kinds of batching, when you process? Now, first of all, it's not meant for every single thing. You definitely don't want to do this for 
certain kind of things where the information is too important. But these analytical events, they can be in the queue for a while and then you can process them once in a while. What happens? How does it actually help? The first is it improves the efficiency. Now, processing item one by one is too heavy. It will increase the load. But if you're processing all the things in the collection, it will reduce the load significantly. Your database connections will be less, uh, of course, as well as your API calls will be reduced and there, you're just performing one single operation. So that is why it 100% improves the efficiency, but there is a time and there is a requirement of this batching. Don't apply this batching to every single uh, CRUD operation or CRUD application that you are building, but yes, there are ways where it actually is required. The next one is latency versus throughput trade-off. Now, the reason why I have called this as trade-off because yes, uh, first of all, this latency part. The latency that you're going to see is going to be falling quite a lot because the things are not happening immediately. Things are taking time now. We are collecting the data and then we are throwing them off in the database or to the user. So latency is considerably low. But the throughput is high. More items are getting processed in just one request. So it's a trade-off. What do you want in your application to happen? Are you okay with not processing the data immediately and processing them in the bulk after time? Because these days, the CPUs, the GPUs, they are very powerful. So it is possible that you get a high throughput in that. But again, it's a trade-off. Latency goes down, uh, but our throughput actually increased. So how much you are comfortable with that, that will help you to determine how much quantity you want to process and what's the time you have to get it. So this is something. And again, the last, where it is used. It is definitely used in the APIs. It is definitely used in a database writes and it, it is also used in ML inferencing. As I mentioned, I was about to teach you on this example, but we are not talking about them. We'll talk about them in the later on videos. But let's just say models like GPTs and all of them, they actually do a lot of inferencing. Uh, payments like Stripe, they actually do a lot of these batch works and web hooks. So that's why you don't see all the requests immediately. Sometimes they take a minute or probably a few seconds. So this is a common thing. Again, batching is a very common concept, but I didn't realize a lot of people are not aware of it. Another, the next one. So the next must to know concept is a fan out process. All right, so what is a fan out process? Let's talk about it. Now fan out or fanning out is an interesting concept. Let me walk you through with an example. So fan out is a simple way that you have one task, but if you're gonna do that task, it's going to take longer time for you to, to completely do that task. Instead, you break the task into different smaller tasks and you hand over these smaller tasks to different people. And those people are responsible for doing that task. And we get certain advantage. Let's just say a task was break, broken down into three of these steps. If one of the tasks fail, the middle one, the first task is complete or first subtask is complete. The third subtask is complete. Only the second one fail. So we can attempt to do the second task again. Only the second one. And first of all, you also get the parallel processing of the task as well. You are not busy at all. You have just handed over them. A great example would be, let's just say you are hosting a tea party at your home and you want to serve the snacks, you want to serve the teas and somebody who's not drinking the tea, maybe you are offering them some cold drinks or maybe coffee, whatever they like. So instead of doing all of this task on your own, you can actually hire three more people. One will be responsible for greeting the guest. One will be responsible for serving the tea. One will be responsible for serving the snacks. One will be responsible for serving the coffee. You have reduced your load and that's exactly the fanning out. And in the world of AI, this is quite a lot. Let me give you an example. I think you will have, you will understand this much, much easier with this. Let's just say we have a certain task. Uh, you are processing some video or something like that. You have built a platform. So the first task that we have is uh, we want to generate a thumbnail. That's my first task. Then after the thumbnail, we go ahead and do transcription of the video. And apart from that, since this is on our platform, we also want to check whether this video is all okay or good or not. So I want to do virus scan as well. And these are my three tasks that I want to do. So instead of doing them in just one controller or one of the method, what I'll do is I'll fan it out. I'll allocate this to different services and I try to do that. Now, because things are happening as in parallel processing, what we are getting is thumbnail somebody is doing it, a different process or different service is doing it, a transcription is being done by somebody else, and a virus scan is done by somebody else. Let's just say uh, in our case or in our system, 
this transcription failed. So this part is gone. It's not yet done. So what impact does it make? Nothing much. Surely the transcription hasn't been done. But the thumbnail part, it's done. The virus scan, it's done. Only the transcription is not getting done. So I can just re-attempt this mini task and I can save a lot of processing. That's exactly what happens in the world of AI. So we can see the parallel processing. We have great way of sub, uh, doing these things parallelly. Not everything needs to be done. Uh, workload definitely gets reduced. Uh, overall time, sometimes it's reduced, but not all the time. Depends on what you're doing. The most important and the luxury why everybody loves to do it is failure isolation. So we are dividing the major task into subtask and if any failure happens, that failure happens in isolation. Not all of the things will fail. If this would be one big controller, I had to regenerate my thumbnail, I have to retry the transcript and then perform the virus scan. But instead I can just do them all in one go. User will feel like one go, but I can know, I know this uh, that only one task has failed. Now this is common in the event-driven architecture whenever you're doing something. So what do you mean by event-driven architectures at this scale? So a lot of time what we do is we actually spin up a lot of AWS uh, lambdas along with the SNS uh, and all these things like, and again, not just SNS, you can actually go ahead and use uh, things like ingest here. That is where this ingest thing actually comes up really nicely and perform very well. So this fanning out, uh, Ingest actually does it so ridiculously good. I'll walk you through in the next video. And that was the reason initially that I wanted to make this one. So I'll touch upon this one in the next video. Wait for that. Hit that subscribe. I will come back onto this in just a minute. So I hope the fanning out concept or the fan out concept is now clear. Now last but not the least, let's go ahead and talk about the scheduling. Now understanding the scheduling is super easy. So let's just say you wake up every day at 7 a.m. Let's just say there would be an app which automatically turns up your kettle to boil the water right at 6.45 a.m. That would be pretty cool. But that's your scheduling. When you put up an alarm in your phone that I want to wake up at 7 a.m. in the morning, so just have some music being played at 7 a.m. That's scheduling. That's literally is scheduling. So you have seen scheduling a lot. In the world where we see the scheduling quite a lot is when you have uh, set up a meeting on the Zoom or maybe on Google Meet. Remember how Google Meet actually reminds you five minutes before they send an email? That's exactly the scheduling. Most of the time you will be doing your scheduling via the Chrome jobs, but there are alternative services available here. And definitely that's the next video coming up. So let's talk about scheduling. You know, these are the tasks which are scheduled to do in the future. And whenever that time happens, there is a Chrome job which constantly keeps on checking the things. If there is time being in the past, it just does that job. So it's simply a time-based execution. As we can see, the Google Meet is really the same example for this. And again, there are lots of such examples. Uh, probably and especially, uh, the Payment Gateway does it really nicely. So they actually do, once a failure happens, they don't try it immediately, they put up a scheduling task that after 30 seconds or one minute, I will retry this payment automatically, let's just say if it goes through or not. Again, hundreds and thousands of examples. It is used uh, in delayed jobs, cron jobs, queues, yes, these are really common one you are gonna see, uh, temporal, lots of such examples are there. I don't want to bog you with too many more complex tech terms, but just get the ideas. Cron is your the fa is your favorite thing to work on with this. Every beginner starts with the cron jobs and eventually you discover more sophisticated tools with that. So right now, just stay with the cron. Majority of the time, you just need that one. Last but uh, not the least is it great for retries and workflows. As I mentioned, the retries after a certain time. Let's just say the mail failed to trigger and your system was not able to fire email. Let's try it after three minutes or three hours, whatever you wish to have. So these are the three topics that I wanted to cover. These are really interesting topic to work on with. And I honestly thought that a lot of people will know about them. But then I realized a lot of beginners have started to watch my channel again. So I thought, let's go ahead and cover them up. These are although the topics of mostly system design, but it's not system design. It's something that you use every single day and you will be using them if you are working anywhere nearby closely to AI, you will be working with them. So that is it for this video. Let's catch up in the next one.